I've just come back from a very scary assignment up in our remote north, where the waters teem with deadly marine creatures. Box jellyfish, sea snakes, Cape York truly is the poisonous tip of Australia. My guides on this adventure were a bunch of gung-ho scientists who risk everything to milk these deadly animals for their venom. They're convinced these highly toxic poisons may in fact hold the key to incredible medical breakthroughs. All very well, but getting these nasty critters to part with their venom is not for the faint-hearted. When the sun goes down, Brian Fry's unusual workday begins. Snake, 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 snake! Oh, that's a ripper! He may look like a commando, but this Melbourne University biologist is one of a fearless breed of scientists in search of a medical miracle. Here's uh, some fettuccine with fangs. Oh, it's an elegant sea snake. We're cruising the rivers around Weeper, near the tip of Cape York, on the hunt for some of the deadliest snakes on Earth. It's not for the faint-hearted. The tattoo on Brian's back says it all. It's the molecule for adrenaline, and he admits he's totally addicted. Oh, jeez, Brian. Yeah, he can... I don't really want to jump out of the boat, but it, it could be an option. So he'll kill you? Oh, he'll kill you. Straight up. Yeah. Oh, you'll suffer for a while, but then you'll die. <laughs> go, 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 go! Ah, no, he's got oh, it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Got him, got him. Ah, gotcha. Oh. Right in. The big one. The method to all this madness is the hope that sea snakes' deadly toxins can one day be developed as medicines and painkillers in the human world. Here we go. Jeez. Oh, all right, so here's, here's Mama. Oh, <laughs> sausage mouth. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and put her in the bin. Wait, one. Yeah, yeah, we'll just check. That's what I'm talking about. We'll just check that. It <laughs> <laughs> does look very secure to me. It's been a productive night, and we're heading back to shore with our deadly cargo. There it is. There we go. Nice big venom yield. Next comes the perilous task of harvesting the venom from our catch, literally milking it from the fangs. There we go. If you want to find a new potential drug item out of a venom, the best place to find it is going to be out of something that's really unique, and you can't get anything more unique than a sea snake. The gum gets pushed back like that, penetrates the flesh, and the venom gets injected through that hollow, hypodermic needle-like fang. And good night, nurse. Exactly. Let the screaming begin. What type of drugs are going to be possible from the venom of these creatures? It may seem paradoxical to most people that we're trying to flip things around, to take something that kills and make it something that heals. But if we've got something that kills, it's got to hit the body in a certain way. And sometimes it might cause you to feel numb so you're, you know you don't really realize what's going on well great that's an anesthetic right there waiting to happen or it might thin your blood well beautiful that's something we might be able to use for the treatment of stroke hey. brian's quest for venomous cures began not on the ocean but on dry land when we first met this american-born aussie two years ago he just surprised the science world by discovering potentially useful poison in goannas Brian believes goanna venom carries enormous promise. Just like the medical breakthrough that came out of the fangs of a primitive and rare Mexican lizard. It's now helping countless thousands of diabetes patients around the world. Mr Mills, want to come through? Men like John Mills, a retired fireman from Sydney. Come in, good to see you. Come in, take a seat. How are you going with your blood sugars on Bayetta? I'm going bloody good. Oh, yeah. okay. Diabetes specialist, Dr. Soji Swaraj, put John on the drug Bieta. It's reduced his weight, stabilised his blood sugar levels, and he says, transformed his life. Wait for 10 seconds, yep. as I said. Combined with a diet, John's now losing more than a kilo a week. Approximately 128 kilograms. 
Um, previously, you were 138, so there's at least 11 kilos off, so that's great. Do you know where it comes from, John? No. I know. If it's scary, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Would it surprise you to know that this is made from the venom of a lizard, the healer monster? Yeah. We'll keep the lizards alive, mate, because he's done a good job. <laughs> It's a surprise, isn't it, yeah. to, to think that something from a lizard has made such a difference to your life? Yeah, well, I'm glad. But that's the inherent beauty of venom research, is that you can't predict where the next wonder drug is going to come from, so you need to conserve all of these amazing animals simply because of that. And it seems the more poisonous the creature, the more useful they can be. To find the animal with the deadliest venom of all, we've come to Mission Beach, south of Cairns. But it's here that Mother Nature plays the cruelest trick. In a place tailor-made for taking a swim, there's no way that without the protection of one of these lycra suits, I'd be going anywhere near the water. And here's why the most venomous animal on the planet, the box jellyfish, a killer that claims at least one Australian life every year. The venom for box jellyfish acts substantially faster on the heart than an inland taipan. So compared to the world's deadliest snake, it beat it hands down? Oh, easy. This time, my venom hunting guide is Professor Jamie Seymour from the Tropical Australian Stinger Research Unit at James Cook University. He's just as committed, just as courageous. There's one, hang on, there's one. Knock it out of gear, mouse. Knock it out of gear. He marks the spot and then, incredibly, wrangles this floating killer with his bare hands. Tentacles on your finger. You got one on your finger? Yeah. Is that hurting? Um, yeah. Jamie says he can't get a proper grip with gloves, so small stings are just an occupational hazard. What would happen if you got all that tentacle on you? Oh, look, there's enough tentacle on that animal to probably kill 15, 20 people. Seriously? Oh, easily, easily. A minute and a half. It's all over. Your heart stopped, and that's the end of it. But you're holding that with your bare hands. <laughs> I've got the non-bitey end. <laughs> That's the important bit. Jamie knows only too well what he's risking. A few years ago, he was stung by the box jellyfish's smaller cousin, the Irukandji. As you can see from this footage, he was violently ill and the pain was intense. But the stings he's had from the box jellyfish were worse. Can you describe the pain? <laughs> Yeah, I, I've, got, I've got to admit, it's, it's, it's a surreal sort of pain. It's not a pain that you get stung and it builds up, it's there, bang, and it, it goes to a level straight up, and it stays at that level. And, and the best way I can uh, to describe it is, think of a, a sort of a, a red-hot knife, drag it across your skin, intensify that pain by probably a factor of 10, hang on to it for 20 minutes, and you're getting close. So I was slightly hesitant when Jamie asked me to collect the deadly tentacles for his research. So if you take the lid off that... So hang on, how are we going to get all those tentacles in here? Trust me, I'm a doctor. Would I lie to you? <laughs> you right? That's not good. Oh, OK. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at the length of that. So this is starting to get relaxed. So if I can borrow those scissors for 30 seconds, what I'm going to do is pick that up. If you put that underneath, so if I copped all this now... You're dead. Right, thank you. That's all right. <laughs> There's a great element of trust. No, no, trust you you need not watch me, watch the container where the tentacles are. That's it, right. Now, if you want to cut those tentacles off as close to the body as you possibly can... Uh, a little lower, a little lower. No, no, a little lower down. Yep. There? Yep, about there. That's great. Yep. That's a lot of firepower in there. Oh, absolutely. And that firepower may become a very effective medical tool. Once they learn why the venom is so lethal to the human heart, they might be able to turn it around from a curse into a cure 
for heart patients. We may be able to then attach another drug to it and get that to the heart. The things you can use it for will be limitless. To be so venomous, so deadly, it, it amazes me we don't know more about it. It amazes you. It scares me. G'day, I'm Steve Irwin, and these are highly venomous sea crates. It's little wonder Jamie has the utmost respect for these waters and the deadly creatures that live here. He was right there when his good mate Steve Irwin died after that fatal encounter with a stingray. Was it stingray venom that killed Steve Irwin? No, basically with Steve, I mean, there was venom left behind in the heart wound, but basically Steve ended up with a two and a half centimetre tear in the left ventricle of his heart, which may, means he had a slip like that in his heart, in the lower chamber, which is used to pump, and basically, in a, in a nutshell, the blood just drained out of his heart. When he died, did it make you think twice about what you do? You immediately become a heck of a lot more cautious about what you're doing, but you can't walk away from it. As I said, you know, if I don't do it, who does? But like Steve Irwin, you can make a mistake. Yeah, you can. You can. But, you know, do you wrap yourself up in cotton wool and, and sit at home? These are the protective arm cuffs for um, the sea snakes prevent against bites. Prevent against bites? Well, yeah. So it's... Well, hang on. How, how thick is that? It's five millimetres, and most of the snakes up here are going to have fangs less than that. Most, but not all. <laughs> the venom hunters are aware of the inherent dangers of their jobs and careful to pass on that knowledge to trainees, like PhD student Helena Safavi. You feel safe around this guy? Yeah, most of the time, I do. But there are no guarantees. Brian had told me this species, an olive sea snake, is normally very placid and easy to handle. But watch the snake's head. It bears its fangs and then sinks them into my hand. Luckily, the diving glove was thicker than the fangs. I thought you said they were placid. Oh, they're very gentle animals, but like anything else, if it feels threatened, it will turn around and try to defend itself. Well, it certainly so... did that, but thanks, thanks to the glove. Exactly. It was a sobering reminder of the dangers these scientists face every time they're out searching for something new. Oh, you're a man. Something undiscovered that might one day save your life. Yeah. Is it worth the risk? Yes, it is worth the risk, and not because of the adrenaline side of things, but because of the professional achievement side of things. For the science? Yes, exactly. It's the science that drives me, not the adrenaline. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.